Welcome back, Block Show, Singapore 2019. We're here with, watch this one, Cyprian Pungila. I destroyed that name. It's our natural Romanian name, and I just completely trashed it. I am so That's sorry. That's not true. That you I'm, actually got it right on the spot. Very good. Oh, well, <laughs> listen, thank you. Save me a little bit. But what's happening right now is this is the maven that's going to introduce you guys to really what's the, what's the meat, what's the potatoes behind blockchain, and how can we truly leverage that? We're going to have this conversation. So please say hi to the DLive audience. Hello, everyone. Very and, good to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. No problem at all. Can you just tell them a little bit about what you're doing right now, what you've done over the past two years, mm -hmm. and let's bring it to back to the state of the blockchain right now. Absolutely. So we started about years ago, and we tried to bring some innovation into the blockchain-focused area because one of my main focuses on research, on the research side of things, mm -hmm. is actually high-performance computation. Okay. Now, to give you some background, I come from the Western University of Timisoara. I'm also a senior lecturer there, and I have classes in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. and I also have classes on high-performance computation. Okay. And because my focus was so much on high-performance computation and blockchain evolving so much, mm -hmm. at one point I thought, well, we're going to reach the physical limits of our technology at okay. one point in the near future all right and when that happens the only thing we can do is not scale up but you know scale horizontally as much as we can Absolutely. which means we have to find ways to put to good use what we already have okay and high performance computation heterogeneous systems do that okay. that's what they're, they're aiming to do and there's not a lot of project using it right now there's a lot of ideas okay. moving ahead but our research on the ABA Foundation side actually lies at the very core of this concept. How do you apply high performance computation into the blockchain industry? Oh, well, let me ask you this. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, at our university, we have one of the most powerful supercomputers in Southeastern Europe. I okay. think it's still number one. It's called the IBM Blue Gene P. Yes, that's right. It has about 4,096 cores, a cluster of Tesla GPUs, and it has about 18 teraflops of sustainable power. Okay. So, um, if this was NASA, circa, <laughs> this would be the size of maybe Germany, what we're talking about right now, computation. <laughs> so, yeah. it's, it's kind of a self-sustained industry, so to say, wow. but it's a, it's a good thing because it allows us to do a lot of research on it. From digital images coming from satellites, and we're talking about petabytes of data every day, oh, to doing high-performance computation, especially on the blockchain side of things. So, uh, not to get off of this, but how did machine learning and AI play into this whole world, this sector of yours? Well, it's a very interesting concept because there's a lot of people nowadays developing technologies which involve AI approaches, and especially on the blockchain side of things, um, mostly when it comes to data sharing, when it comes to doing KYC or AML, or stuff like that, which is usually done right now through closed doors, so to say. Right. But there's a lot of initiatives, like uh, you know, distributing data through a blockchain-focused initiative, mm -hmm. and that could actually help. I think it's gonna be one of the big things to come in the future. And one of the things I'm also hoping to, for, for to see is how the European Union in the near future is going to allow grants to be voted on a democratic way through the blockchain. Wow, because right, yeah, because right now there's a lot of funds, a lot of funding going to various universities right. throughout the world, but it's not really, you know, it's a closed door process. I was going to say, how, how are they using, how are they exactly. pulling the switches behind the closed doors? Right, right. So wow. we need to open up the world to that, I think, from my perspective. I, I think you're absolutely right in that, yeah. in that respect. Man. That's, that's yeah. a really good one. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. We have this fantastic uh, 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 technology right now, blockchain. Yes. We have the power right this yep. is heavy computation we have that we've got let's go quantum computing right <laughs> we've got ai ml machine yep. learning right yeah and then we have david josh dimitri right. vladimir anastasia peter right sitting here saying how the hell is all of this gonna right. when will it affect me how will it affect me right and, and really the most important do i give a poop Absolutely. I think that's right on spot because a lot of people don't understand the concepts. I think the whole point behind blockchain, and you know, blockchain came to life a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's a distributed system type of thing. But Bitcoin brought it into focus because for the first time in, in human history that, that we know of, mm -hmm. it brought the idea of social freedom, financial independence right. to the table. Right. 
And I think that's something that people have been struggling for a lot of time. You know, if you fight with regulations, increasingly stricter regulations in various countries, various legislations about how you control finance, it's only going to get more difficult Absolutely. to do even, you know, the basic transfers that you do to, to pay out your loans or to pay out your, your car or, you know, your mother if you want to send money to her. Look at emerging economies. How exactly. Can we, get, we can't get over that barrier. Absolutely. We, we have little regulation. Exactly. So, you know, this is a, is a sweet spot yes. for the emerging Where, Who else do you see really benefiting? What other sectors with medicine, mm -hmm. real what do you see benefiting from this in the short term? Right. In the short term, I think there's going to be an explosion of how the blockchain is going to revolutionize a lot of the world that we see today. Mm -hmm. Mostly in fintech, because Bitcoin started this trend, right? right? So there's a lot of going on research about how you apply it to fintech, how you do the performance thing. There's legislations actually being written right now mm -hmm. that allow blockchain to be used into the fintech world. And I think that's absolutely amazing. If you think about it, Malta, with APEI systems using the APEI Foundation technology, mm -hmm. it's actually applying that, that very core of technology technology to the law that the Maltese government is actually wow. writing right now. All right. Did yes. You, how active were you inside this whole, that whole legislation? Um, I was. I actually stood at one point in a round table and we were discussing with the people, the regulators. It was off the record. It wasn't really an official meeting, uh -huh. but it was off the record. And I could see their openness to this yeah. because they can understand the potential. That's it. Listen, guys, you don't understand. I'm kind of geeking out over here on this <laughs> moment, but that's a huge, huge moment it is. for product development, user experience, and when you're in the mix of all of this, being able to sit down and have that attention, forget about it. So yeah. congratulations to you on everything that you've done so Thank far. Thank you so much. What are the challenges that we're going to have over the next uh, the next few years? Because I know that yeah. um, we're just getting out of the ICO craze, yeah. right? And yeah. we're taking rubber to the road. Right. And with some of the guys that have gained traction, there's actual product, not a white paper now. Right. Um, what do you see the next shift? Where do you see the next change in the, in the masses of, of adoption? I think that's an excellent question. The best thing that a technology can do right now is prove its worth. Okay. That's really what it is about. You know, I, I was mentioning right a few minutes ago at the panel that we're facing a Babel Tower type of situation right. where people speak a lot of languages. It's like we have all these blockchains, but what are going to be used at, mm -hmm. right? We have to find a way to merge that technology together to a point, right. not a singularity point, but something close to that, which allows us to understand each other better. Okay. And at the eBay Foundation, we've actually initiated the process, the research, to build a foundational framework on how to achieve that for cross-chain operability. Okay. In other words, if I use Ethereum for, for smart contract development, that's perfect. I can apply it to various situations, like like the law, like medicine, like uh, you know, supply, supply chain analysis and stuff like that. But at the same time, I can hook it up into the ABA Foundation blockchain, where I can hook it up into the Bloxberg Initiative, which is what our university is a part of right now. Okay. It's a university with 20, it's a consortium with 20 universities uh, throughout Europe. And it's, it's amazing because it's blockchain focused and it's wow. blockchain based. Wow, okay. And, How can the folks out there yeah log on and see and see this consortium and what's happening with them. Well, right now they can go to Bloxburg. It's okay. just type Bloxburg on Google okay. and they can see the, the initiative. Mm -hmm. And it's a very strong one because it's supported by the Max Planck Society. And if you don't know what that is, it's probably the biggest in the world right now. Ever since 1914, mm -hmm. they had 30 Nobel laureates, which is amazing. They build like the top, top science people out there. Jeez. And when you see that kind of thing happening, when you see that type of embrace of technology, you realize you're on the verge of something big. Okay. It's like, you know, it, 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 just, a, just a couple of, of weeks ago, I was at the university with Mihai Alicia, which is the Ethereum co-founder. And one of the initiatives that the Ethereum network is trying to do right now is, is also focusing on social aspects of life. Which is, which is you know, crazy if you think about it because we're on the verge of rebuilding the web, right. basically. That's right. how the web emerged, from basically an idea, and it came to life because people built on top of it. And that's exactly what's happening with all these blockchains, with the smart contracts, with all the developers in the community that's evolving around them. So, since you are a wealth of knowledge, well, I and that, but you have you. experienced pretty much a lot, traveled around for quite some time, yeah. over the past two years, yeah. can you think about any lessons that you learned that you can share with the community right now? Sure. I think the most important lesson is focus on the technology use cases, not on necessarily high transactions per second, stuff like that, which is usually a marketing type of thing, right. and it's understandable. But if you focus on the transaction, on, uh, sorry, on the usability aspect of things, if you focus on how you can put that technology to good use, and it's solid, it's proven to work, it's sustained by research, why not? That's exactly what we're That's doing at the foundation, exactly. yes. Uh, but not just us, there's other people doing it out there. 
but as far as we know, we're the first academic initiative with papers published and in preprint formats as well, which are supporting this idea. I think that's the type of, of evolution that we're going to see moving ahead forward and the type of adoption we're going to see even if at, at government levels. Right, right. So sure. that's Very absolutely sure. stunning. All right. well, I can't thank you enough for stopping by thank and imparting so these, these words of wisdom it's to been us. It's a pleasure. Uh, guys, we'll be right back with a little bit more and we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank we you. will. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Let me grab your telegram.